Hello everyone and welcome. Today we will be looking at modern CAD solutions to adding clearances to your parts. And I particularly like this one. So for the demonstration we will be using a Libre design, but it will work in Fusion and Onshape. Unfortunately it won't work in FreeCAD or a Libre Atom 3D. As usual, let's make two parts. First one and second one. And let's edit the first part and create some kind of shape. We will select the front plane or XY plane and activate the sketch. For this, I will use the slot tool and just create the base for our model. I will not be dimensioning anything, it's just for demonstration. So let's deactivate sketch and extrude it for 10 millimeters. Let's color our part. Click OK. And now we can create our interface tabs. So let's select the top plane, activate sketch, and let's create different tabs. First one will be circular. Let's create that one. The second one will be rectangular. Let's select the center rectangle and create it. And the last one will be let's say the circular slot. So we have a nice amount of shapes to play with. Let's deactivate sketch and extrude it. Let's say for the same 10 millimeter. Click OK. And the first part is done. Let's activate the second part. Select the top face, activate sketch, and it will be very, very easy because we will Select Project Sketch, select our top face, maintain association, and click OK. Deactivate sketch, extrude it up to geometry, and select top face. Click OK, and we are done. Let's color it. And we can look at our assembly. So now what we want to do is we want to add some clearances to the holes. Let's select our first part and click edit. For this type of offsets, we will be using the offset face command, which requires to select the face and how much we will need to offset. There are some considerations to take into account. And the first one is the dependency and the relationships. So to demonstrate that, let's hide our second part. Let's select our face. We can input value or we can click on the handle and drag it a bit. So we made our circular post smaller. Let's hit apply, close, let's get back to assembly and let's enable our second part. And you will notice that we did not create any clearances. All we did, we made our post smaller and as those parts are related to each other, let's edit the second part, edit the sketch, you will see that it still projects the edge around the post. So the hole in our second part will follow the diameter of our first part. So the first thing to remember is that you need to add these clearances to the dependent part, not to the original part. It's a good way to remind you that you should always avoid the circular dependencies. And uh, it is when we have the first part and we build some feature of the second part based on this part. And then we take the first part again and modify it and add features based on the second part. So we created this circular dependency. This is quite bad practice and you should always avoid it. So back to our part. Now let's hide the first part. Let's enable our offset face and select the inner face of our hole. Let's drag it a bit, and this will increase our hole diameter. Click Apply, Close, let's enable the first part. So now you see that the hole is bigger than the post. So we have modified the part that is dependent and can be modified with the offset face. To validate that it works and everything is fine and dependencies are in place, let's just check our sketch. Yes, our diameter is still the correct size. Let's exit sketch. Let's edit the first part, hide the second part. 
and let's use additional tool from the direct modeling toolset. Now let's select the move face tool and let's try to select the cylindrical face. You can notice that we cannot select it because we are using the push and pull planner faces and cylinder is not a planner face. So instead, we need to use axis and the offset. Now we can select our face. Then we will need to select the edge. Let's select this one. And let's offset it a bit closer. Hit apply. Close. Go to the assembly. Regenerate everything and enable the second part. And we can observe that all our changes to the part are still working properly. Now let's hide our first part. Edit the second part. What we will need to do is open our offset face. Let's select faces. And then we can just again drag it and increase the clearance. Hit apply, close. Let's enable the first part just to validate that everything is fine. However, additional tip is for example, if you're printing it in the vertical orientation and there's quite a big bridging, there is a possibility that only the top clearance needs to be a bit bigger. For that, we can just activate the offset face tool again, select the top face and move it a bit higher. Apply, close, and now you can use this technique to avoid some interferences with the clearances that are around the bridges. And just to finish up with this tool, let's have some fun with the slot. First, let's make something interesting and use the offset face only on this face. And let's see what happens if we drag it a bit inside. So it will decrease the radius and it will fill it in. However, if we exceed the radius of the arc and look what happens. We will drag it and exceed it and it will just cut right through. So you need to pay attention of the amount of offset that you can create in these faces. Let's see what happens if we drag it back. It goes back to our predicted behavior and let's try to drag it a bit outside. So it will start cutting more and more until it exceeds the wall and then it will start to act unpredictably again and we will get an error. So there is a limit to this tool. Let's hit back, let's open on the tool again and select a different wall and let's see how it works. So if we close it up, it will just continue the radius and close and close the gap. Further, if we drag it lower, it will just cut it in. Let's hit Ctrl Z and let's increase the whole slot in size. So let's make it a bit bigger. Apply, close, and let's see the result. So now, what are the benefits of this approach? The benefits are that you can model your part fully in nominal dimensions and add clearances only where you need them after the fact. What's nice about it is that you will get these features as the last features in the feature tree. So you can rename it, make it visible, and you will see directly for the part that you have offset at face and you will be able to modify these offsets for specific features. And if, for example, you have printers with different tolerances, you can just modify the offsets and make it suitable for each individual printer model that you have. So it's a nice and controlled way how to do it. You can even adjust those clearances for a specific material in 3D printer because PLA's shrinking factor is totally different to ABS and you would need to play a bit with those clearances. So in the end you can have single project with nominal dimensions and you can add on top of that your clearances, modify them and have multiple outputs. For example, when you export the STL or STEP file, you can have different outputs from the same project. What are the cons of this approach? So you will need as with any modeling approach, be aware of circular dependencies, especially if you are modeling in context. And the benefit that I mentioned that you will have multiple parts, it means that you will need to manage those multiple parts 
as well. So you will need to control the outputs and name them and store them appropriately. I hope you found this discussion useful. Let me know if you use this approach. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next one.